right guys so we're gonna go into 8 9 uh, section 8 9 that's the farthest we're gonna get uh, for chapter 8 we don't have time to go to 10 or 11 just to let you know Tuesday tomorrow you're gonna have a quiz um, on 8 uh, 7 and all the way to 8 8 9 so what I'm co covering today I'm going to do a review um, so I'll have videos for review for 8, 7, and 8, 8 and address some of the questions that you brought up on Friday and then on Wednesday we're going to review for our test which is going to be on Friday so as you can see we pretty much have today, Monday and Tuesday to get what we need to get done Wednesday review and then we have our test so Tuesday we're going to have to get this quiz done and out of the way so 8, 9 is about solving literal equations. So this is pretty much where you're given some of your questions will give you more than one variable, sometimes even more than two. And then they're going to ask you to solve for one of the variables. So for instance, in this equation right here, I'm being asked to solve for x. But before I go into this example, I'm going to move to here and we're going to kind of recap how we could solve for x in this example. And then we'll move on to the rest of the examples. Alright, so if we're going to solve for x, then we have to do what? We have to subtract 32 on this side and subtract 32 on this side. Okay, so that gives us 3x is going to equal 12 subtract 32. Okay, then that gives us 3x is going to equal, when you subtract this, you'll end up with a minus. 20 I believe all right and then to solve for x you're going to have to divide by 3 and you're going to divide by 3 and x is going to equal minus 20 over 3 now this is just a linear equation right we know how to solve this kind now for this you can see we have two variables so what you're going to end up happening is you're going to be having um, the variable that you're solving for then all the other variables are going to be on the other side of whatever you're solving for okay so let's go into this example here so we've got a and we have 3x plus 4y is equal to 12 and now we have to solve for x we are going to have this y on the other side not here we didn't have any we didn't have any other variable but because we do have another variable this variable don't worry about it just treat it like you would a regular linear equation and it's just going to be on the other side your answer at the end of it all needs to say x is equals to whatever else goes on here including that y so what are you going to do to be able to solve for x you're going to have to uh, isolate the x the term that has the x has to stay by itself everything else has to go on the other side so that's why you always want to start whatever they ask you to solve for you're going to want to eliminate to isolate it and then solve for it so here we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract 4y on both sides this will give us 3x is going to equal that becomes a zero so 12 minus 4 y we're solving for x so that means x needs to be by itself so how do i get x by itself i have to divide by 3 and i have to divide by 3 this cancels out and this leaves me with x is going to equal 12 minus 4 y over 3 and there you have solved this equation for x there is your solution all right next example just going to put it over here next example we're going to look at is going to be solve for a b over d is equals to 15 and now we're going to solve for a all right so we are trying to solve for this so we have to isolate 
And at the end of it all, we need to have something that says A is equals to everything else. So first thing we notice is that 4A, A is entangled with 4 and B, being multiplied by 4 and B. Then it's being divided by D. So our goal is to isolate A by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to multiply by D so that we are able to cancel this D out. And then that kind of gives us this term 4AB. Okay, so first thing is going to be 4AB over D. It's being divided, so we're going to do the opposite, which is going to be multiplying by D. That means you have to multiply this other side by D as well. These guys cancel out. Now you have 4AB is equal to 15D. Again, you're trying to solve for A. This is what you're trying to solve for. So what should you do to be able to solve for that A? Currently, A is being multiplied by 4. It's being multiplied by B. So that means you have to divide by 4B. Divide by 4B on this side. Divide by 4B on this side. Okay, that cancels out. Cancels out. Now you're left with A. A is going to equal 15D over 4B. Right? And now you just solve for what A was going to be. Alright. Um... The next one we're going to go for is going to solve A is equals to P1 plus RT. And now we're going to solve for T. Note this right here has a lot of other variables. We've got A, B, and T, and R. But we're trying to solve for T. Okay? So your goal is to get it to where you have t is equals to everything else. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to distribute this p. So this will be a is going to equal p distribute plus p r t. Okay? Now again, we're trying to we're trying to solve for t, okay? So that means this guy at the end of it all needs to be by himself. But first, we notice that the term that has p r t, there's a p being added to it. So how do we how do we undo that? We have to subtract the p so that we can have this term by itself. So a minus p is going to equal p r t. So we're subtracting P, we're subtracting P. Alright? Now we can kind of see we're getting there. We're trying to solve again for T. Alright, how do we get that going? Right now, P, T is being multiplied by P and R. So we have to do the opposite to enable this to be isolated by itself. Meaning we got to divide by P or P, R. So we have A minus P is equal to P, R, T. Divide by P R. Divide by P R. Can I get this up a little bit? Sorry. All right. Cancel, cancel, and there you have it. You have T is equals to A minus P over P R. Note that it does say A minus P over P R is equals to T, but you can use your law, um, your properties to switch it, which means the same thing. Alright, so on this example, so this is example 4, so so far we've seen, we've solved this where we just use a regular linear equation, we solve for x, then we looked at this and how to, if we have more than one variable, how to solve for a variable, and then the next one we looked at, we had 4ab over d and we had to solve for a. And then last, the last one we did was the A equals P 1 plus RT and we were solving for T. Okay, now on this one, we're being asked to solve for uh, N. So we're being, we're given our equation here. We're being asked to solve for N. It tells us right there that we're solving for N. Okay, so you can note 
that you've got an N and an N right there. So at the end of it all, you need to have N just on one side, not on both sides. N needs to only appear once for it to be solved uh, correctly. So if you're going to solve and you have N is equals to, but you still have an N on the uh, right hand side, that means something is not right. It means you did not uh, solve it completely. Okay, so to get going on this one, first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our LCD. So think of that as over one if you need to. Um, LCD is going to be R plus NR. So we're going to multiply I is equals to N E over R plus NR. Going to multiply this by R plus NR. Multiply also this side by R plus NR. Okay. This cancels out, okay, and now we're left with R plus NR multiplied by I is going to equal N E, okay. Now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to distribute that I, you're going to distribute this I back into this um, right here, so this will give us R I plus I N R is going to equal N E. Okay. Now you can kind of see you've got the N here, you've got the N here. If you move this to the other side, then maybe you could um, factor out the N and then that would allow you to solve. Okay. So think about your moves as you're doing them. So I R I so we're going to subtract I and R, subtract I and R. So let me cancel this out. So this would be, this would leave us with R, R, I is going to equal an E minus I and R. Now again, we are being asked to solve for N. So here's N. How do you solve for that? You factor this N out. So then R, I. It's going to equal n is common so n factor n out that leaves you with e minus i r all right again at the end of it all your solution needs to say n is equals two okay all right so how do we do that currently n is being multiplied by e minus i r so just divide both sides by e minus i r divide by e minus i r cancel cancel so that gives us our n so r r i over e minus i r is going to equal n this is the same as n is equals to r i over e minus i Okay, and there you have it. You've solved the equation for n. So again, literal equations are basically you're given an equation. The equation is going to have one or more variables and you're trying to solve for one of the variables. Okay, so the homework for this section is going to be um, page 437, set 1. And you're going to do questions 2 through 28 events. Um, and then hopefully I see you guys um, on Tuesday um, for the quiz. I'm hoping I'll be fever free by then. I'm still running a fever. So that's why I'm not here today. So have a good day. I'll see you guys when I return. The other videos for the review will be provided.